Hello and welcome to Go Tell the World. What am I going to tell the world today? Well, I got this little thing in the mail today. It's kind of support the police. It's kind of controversial, I guess. When I was a kid, we learned the police were our friends, the nuns were our friends, the firemen was our friends, and the doctors were our friends. Well, things are changing quickly. But you know what? Do you feel safe when a policeman's around? Do you feel like being really, really good when a nun walks by? Do you feel really safe if your house is on fire and the fireman shows up? These are people that put lay down their life for us. Perhaps it's a physician, a doctor's wife, a pilot's wife, a fireman's wife, or a policeman's wife has to really be given up a lot for their husband to serve the country and to serve their area. You know, same with people in politics, I'm finding. You know, they give up so much. So I was thinking today about when I was a preschool teacher, we always say, put your ears on so you could hear really good. So put your ears on today. My mentality is that children teach us many things, and hopefully we teach them things as well. They're like wet sponges. So if we say police are good, they make you safe. Or doctors are going to help you keep your body healthy. Or if we say firemen put the fire out. We don't need to respect those in authority over us. We need to respect those who, who lay down their life in a way to make us safe. I told the story one time. I, I told it, I don't want to tell on the show, where I had a little fire in my um, oven. And the firemen came. They didn't admonish me. I was taking their time away, but they... Dave says, better be safe than sorry. I had a small fire. I could have put it out myself, I guess. But they were very kind enough to come. Policemen are, are our friends. We see them, and they have, to, they have to make that place safe. We were in Vieira, Florida recently. It's a town in Florida. We lived. It's a very small town, like a planned community. And I, I was at the pizza parlor trying to get some Friday night dinner. A policeman walked in, and I go, is this town still safe? And he said, yeah, real safe. Is the pizza good? Yes, it is. I was so glad to meet a policeman. The next day, we're driving down the main road in Vieira. We see the same policeman chasing a man, drawing his gun, and protecting the people. I said, wow, that's the policeman that just told me the town was safe. What if he hadn't been on call? What if he hadn't been available? What would have happened? We were at the stoplight, and it was a crossroads, and that's right where the car was being stopped. I feel happy to have people that will lay down their life in the military, in the government, in the medical field, in the policemen and firemen, and all over the world. You know, moms are kind of like that too. I don't want to leave out the moms and dads. I watch my children having our grandchildren. They lay down their life every day for those children. If y'all are adults, you know that sometimes it's easy to lay down your life for someone. And sometimes it's not easy. But you have to choose above every day when you're in a specific role. Like if you're a mom, you can't save the baby. I'll nurse you tomorrow. Just wait. I know I had 12 years of nursing babies. I think 12 years of either being pregnant or nursing a baby in my life. Was it easy? No, super hard. Everyone likes to sleep sometimes. It was really hard for me. And I can imagine a policeman or a fireman or a doctor or a nun. I love the nuns, y'all know that. Getting up and having to do something that's really hard to do. They have to rise above. You know, our flesh is what we're trying to tame if we're a Christian. We're trying to make our flesh act in the way that God has asked us. I'm writing a book right now, editing it, and getting all the, the little um, last minute details that's on first edit. And y'all know if you're a writer, that the first edit, you just kind of weed out the, the mistakes. So you can put it to the printer for the second time. Hopefully the second edit will be all, but it's all good. So it's about help. I want to be a godly gal. You know, no matter what age you are, if you want to be godly, you have to practice virtue. And so one virtue that they practice is trying to overcome their flesh and getting up and doing things when they don't want to do them. You know, they don't want to say like, hey, there's, you know, my son loves the firm and he has to get up and do all kinds of things, I'm sure. We, we don't tell stories. We said, just say, and we just know that he has to go, he's on call, he's, he's, he's there at the fireman house, so I call it, and his kids are so proud of him. Why? Because the mommy and daddy tell him that firmans are our friends and it's a good, noble career. I was a flight attendant, so the pilots, we know, were, we, we had to do a lot of things as a, as a pilot. They couldn't drink, they couldn't smoke on the plane, they had to, they had to keep their eyes on their, um, their, their plane and what's in front of them. We always felt safe. We always knew that the, they were going to be well aware, and we also knew 
that they were going to be, um, if something failed, we had, had the instruments to help them out. People say it's safer in a plane than in a car, but someone's got to fly that plane. You choose the red eye and you're up in the middle of the night, someone's flying in that thing, someone that wants to be sleeping, and they have to stay awake. Ooh, sacrifice. What a great word. That is actually what this, this particular podcast is about. No greater love has no man to lay down his life for another person. I sure wish our country would realize, and our, our nation and our churches realize that people are doing the best they can when they're laying down their life. I always say, my daughter, Caitlin, taught me this. She used to say, Mom, everyone can see defects if you're looking through a microscope. I said, oh, that's good. Look through a microscope, you see all the things they said wrong, did wrong. If you're a mom, you're on, you're on call all the time, and they're looking through that microscope, especially you have teenagers. I have adult children, so they're halfway looking through their own life now, seeing that they, it's hard enough job to do it. But there's a lot of hard jobs out there, and, and if you have to look at something, look at ways you can encourage the people. Like, wow, great job. I saw you smile when you felt like you didn't have any sleep last night. My son-in-law, um, Trey, went with us to the art museum yesterday, and we were doing, well, when I go to an art museum with kids, I first asked Bishop if I could talk because my husband thinks it's a no talking. So I said, no, I know I can talk about the grandkids. And so we were, we were posing like all the pictures, like it's all pose. And then we were walking through the museum talking about how many people do you see in that picture? And so I knew my son-in-law was, was tired because he hadn't had sleep and he still came along to the museum with his children and my daughter. It was noble to me because I know how it is not having sleep. You know, sleep is an important part of your life. So we all know that. So these are jobs we're talking about today with sacrifices needed and sacrifices given. Sacrifices needed, you know, you don't get paid more if you're having to go out as a doctor in a three o'clock call, if you're on call. You don't get paid more if you are a fireman or a policeman and something rumbles in the town and it's in the middle of the night when you really thought you'd get a good night's sleep. Well, can we look through that microscope and only see not the defects, but what they're doing right? And not what they're doing wrong. I had a meeting with girlfriends today on a writer's meeting. And one of the main messages, one of the gals, a spiritual director, she talked about that. To look for the things that are doing, encouraging each other and not tearing each other down. We're all made differently was another point made. We're all made so differently. You know, we're all different and that's okay. That's why I always talk about Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers had a way of, he liked everybody just the way they were. I like you just the way you are. Today, Sacrifice your life in the way that you're called to do as a mother, your vocation as a father, as a policeman, as a doctor, as a governmental official, as a nun, as a nurse. Sacrifice is part of the job and do it with a smile. And then remember you get a nap if you can. <laughs> That'd be a good idea. If not, I say this. Choose above the flesh and show virtue. Lead with kindness. Lead with self-control. Lead with patience. If you don't do that, maybe you might need a nap. <laughs> so today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Let's not trash the men in blue. Let's just rejoice that they're there to protect us and they're there to, um, to bring peace in this world in a way that we cannot do it on our own. We need policemen and firemen, doctors, lawyers. We need the government officials. We need the nurses. And we need the mommies and daddies and the nuns. We need you all. So climb on board. Let's make a campaign to lead with virtue. You know, that's what my book's about. Help, I want to be gone with Gail. For teens and tweens, all about what virtue you could walk in. And my story of my, of my life. Have a great day. And this is Ellen Mongan. Go tell the world. What are you going to tell the world today? I hope it starts with virtue and leads with kindness. And I hope that you can get out there and lay down your life for someone that's maybe tired or out of control or even a little person that needs to nurse in the middle of the night. And you have a blessed day, and write me a line, wowellen at yahoo.com. Check out my YouTube channel, and please sign on. I'm begging now. I didn't know you're supposed to have to beg. Ellen Mongan is under that for my YouTube channel. Have a blessed day, and I ended at 10 again. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast off, Florida Word.